You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. They're the defending conference champs for a reason as Tulane beats Memphis. We'll recap the game against the Green Wave, sit down with the star of this year's backfield, and look ahead to the reincarnation of the Battle of the Bones in Birmingham. It's The Ryan Silverfield Show. Let's go. The game is on. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. When you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tough times around the University of Memphis. The Tigers with a tough loss. Hi, I'm Doc Holliday. And I'm Matt Enfield. Memphis falls at home against Tulane. Let's see how it went down. You know it's a big game when the King is in the building. Jerry Lawler releasing the Tigers before an enormous conference showdown under Friday Night Lights against defending AAC champs Tulane. Green Wave find the end zone first. Makai Hughes takes the handoff, bulldozes across the plane from two yards out. 7-0 Tulane in the first quarter. Took a while for the Tigers offense to roar. This jump started them. Seth Hennigan to Demir Blankovsey who reverses field and he has a different gear. Blankovsey showing off that speed for a 47 yard gain. Tigers in business in the Tulane red zone. That connection would pay dividends a few plays later. Hennigan under pressure, not phased. Drops a dime to Blankovsey who makes a great grab in traffic. 17 yard score, third of the season for him. Memphis on the board, it's 10-7. Tigers got to stop. Final minute of the first half. And again, finds a wide open. Joseph Skates who can moonwalk into the end zone. 28 yard crib call, just like that. U of M up 14-10 at the break. They got the ball to start the third and went marching. And again, up top to Rock Taylor who had another big night. 108 receiving yards in the game, 22 of them right here. Memphis inside the two lane 10. And Hennigan keeping cool under pressure to cap off the drive. Defenders all around him, doesn't face QB1 who drops a beauty to Kobe Drake in the back of the end zone. 10 yard score, 21 on answer for the Tigers who now lead 21-10. Unfortunately from there, it was all too lame. First play of the fourth quarter, Yul Keith Brown takes the jet sweep. Gets to the edge and wins the race to the pylons to give the Green Wave the lead back 24-21. After an unlucky interception by Memphis, Tulane turned it into points. Michael Pratt forged his back shoulder throw to Lawrence Keys the third for an 11-yard score. Green Wave scored 21 straight to end the game as the Tigers fall under Friday Night Lights 31-21. Here's Coach Silverfield postgame. And what I told the team in the locker room after the game is that you know, all 120 guys in there, every coach, every member of the staff, starting with me, wasn't good enough. It wasn't, it wasn't what we needed in order to win the football game. And we've all got to be better. The easy thing is to place blame. The easy thing is to make excuses. The easy thing is to point fingers. Uh, but all we know is to go back and work and find ways to win a football game and to improve. Because if we keep going back to the drawing board and saying, okay, hey, this is what we get, we're fine, we can just do it now. We, we gotta find ways to come out faster. Uh, in all three phases, play four quarters of football like we are capable of. First of all, coach, quite a number of players in the NFL, man. Tell me what it means to you to see that University of Memphis represented on the biggest stage as far as, as, far as football-wise. Yeah, it's huge, right? Obviously, not only to see those young men get to achieve their goals, right? You, you, usually when you recruit a guy, Right, they tell you the number one thing is not only graduate from the University of Memphis, but then to play in the NFL. And to see those guys to be able to fulfill their lifelong dreams at the highest level, it's a lot of fun. Now, we've got quite a few, and that makes it even more exciting because every Sunday, even some Monday night games, you get to see Memphis Tigers all over the country on a national stage playing at the absolute highest level. They're playing really well. You know, I don't always get to watch those games, but you get to hear about it, you get to see the highlights, and it's been very, very exciting. A lot of running backs. I'm gonna let him, the running back, ask about those guys. I wanna ask you, you know I'm a Jets fan. Bryce Huff, 
on a defensive line full of great pass rushers. He is emerging as one of the best among them. How cool has that been for you to watch? Yeah, you know, and Bryce Huff, one of those guys that didn't get a ton of fanfare even when he was at the university, but you talk about his development, not only his four or five years here, but then what he's been able to do year in and year out at the, you know, at the Jets. And I think one of those guys is that Every team talks about him, right? Oh, he's the designated pass rusher. He gets after quarterbacks. He's getting sacks. He's getting quarterback hits. And now the entire NFL knows who Bryce Huff is. We always knew who he was at the University of Memphis. We knew he had a special talent, unique skill set. Now we're seeing it on third downs, getting after those quarterbacks. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. Now, Coach, I'm happy that all Memphis Tigers in the NFL, but I know we always do offense, defense. And Bryce played defense. <laughs> Love what Bryce is doing, but on that offense, man, we got Tony Pollard in there doing his thing, Patrick Taylor, uh, Junior, Kenneth Gainwell, Calvin Austin. You know, I like to see, you know, especially when they have those primetime games, they say yada, yada, yada from the University of Memphis. How much pride do you take when, when they say, say that and you see that? Well, I think that's huge. You know, a lot of these guys now throw out a high school or a middle school or a flag football team. And the, our Tigers sit there and, and, and are so proud. You see them get big chests and say, you know, Quindell Johnson, University of Memphis. And I love it. Or they'll say the University <laughs> of Memphis. So it's so much pride. And it's fun because you got to see these guys develop. Right? Very few of these guys came in as true five stars that had, hey, oh, they're for sure going to the NFL. They worked their tails off here at Memphis. And then you get to see it, you know, and, and not just for one year. Some of these guys are playing multiple years in the NFL, and that's what's really exciting. I want to ask about the best of that bunch right now, Tony Pollard, Memphis kid, played here, fourth round pick, and now he's the lead back and one of the best running backs in the league for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, what are your thoughts on what he's doing? Well, I think it's phenomenal, right? He's a Memphis born and bred kid, right? Obviously po Pollard's Barbecue, give them a shout. Um, but you know, to see what he's been able to do, he actually was recruited initially as a safety, came here kind of as that wide receiver running back role. We knew he could do as a kickoff returner. And now, like you said, he's considered one of the top running backs in the NFL, right? Obviously they franchised him. We're expecting Tony to get a lot of money somewhere after the season, but he's a phenomenal young man, first and foremost, and doing tremendous things in the NFL. So to get to see him have success multiple years in the league, we know he's got even a brighter future ahead of him. It's been a lot of fun. And not only Tony, Coach, uh, Quindale Johnson, that's what I like about him, man, because, you know, when I got to the league, I was got to camp, got cut, practice squad, then activated. So he's kind of long that process. Is he someone you look at and be like, I'm extremely happy for Quindale? Yeah, you know, Quindale Johnson, I remember the day I walked into the high school and, and saw him as a junior in high school. And you had the opportunity then as the recruitment process went on, had the opportunity not only you know he's got a twin brother that played here at memphis and, and to get to know his parents and the entire family and then to see the process went on right he had the opportunity to leave here go in the transfer portal seek more money and he stayed true to the memphis family and uh, it worked out for him right he's the one that went to the rams you know undrafted free agent i certainly thought he should have been drafted and guess what the bears agreed with us they pulled him off the practice squad they put him on their active roster he had an interception a few weeks ago Quindell Johnson's got a bright, bright future in the NFL, and he's one of those young men. It's been such a joy to watch his work ethic and what he's been able to do, not only at the collegiate level here at Memphis, but now just starting his NFL rookie career. Gotta stay fit. Let's get an inside look with the team's nutritionist. We get here around 5.40 a.m. Uh, this gives me the opportunity to check in with Coach Schoen, who's our head of our sports science department. Uh, to get everything set up on Smartabase. Smartabase is the technology that we use to weigh in each guy each day. Uh, during camp, we do weigh in each guy every day. Um, and we do that from a, from a hydration standpoint. And so we're really checking to see and making sure, you know, post-practice, we practice in the afternoon during camp. Um, are we well hydrated? Are we well recovered from that post-practice? Were we able to get back to what we were at before, um, after that practice at dinner and at snack? Uh, so we weigh in each guy uh, before they kind of come in, they get here around 6 a.m. Blake Watson has burst onto the scene with the Tigers this year. We'll sit down at the star running back. Coming up next. You're watching the Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Welcome back to the Ryan Silverfield Show. Memphis has pumped out great running backs over the years, and they look like they the next one in Blake Watson. Watson grew up in the shadow of Shea Stadium and City Field in Flushing, Queens, and that laid the roots for his original favorite sport. Yeah, I played everything. Um, football wasn't even in the picture for a while. I played um, football, baseball, and basketball, but uh, I was originally a baseball player. What were, what were you like as a baseball player? What position did you play? What was your game like? I was actually a catcher. I was a catcher and a shortstop, and I played a little bit of outfield, but I didn't really like outfield because when you're younger, not everybody hits it out there, but 
Yeah, catcher and shortstop. So when did football become the main thing? Uh, football probably became the main thing going into high school is when I probably uh, dropped everything else and started focusing on football. Watson went to high school in North Carolina where he started football and almost accidentally became an All-American in track and field. So that was just something that like my uh, football coach wanted me to do in high school. So I um, just joined, took it a little <laughs> too serious and uh, ended up being um, a New Balance uh, All-American up in New York. We had, that was during our uh, indoor season. But when it came time to find a home to play college football, it was slim pickets for Watson. Yeah, recruitment uh, going into college, it was I didn't really have much. I had um, E-Line and ODU, and I just ended up picking ODU. Old Dominion became Watson's home for five years, and he made his mark for the Monarchs, rushing for over 2,000 yards over his last two seasons in Norfolk. It was great. Uh, nothing but great things uh, for me at ODU, and uh, I really did like it there. Talk me through your decision to enter the portal. I was just ready for something new. I mean, doing five years at a school, it was just, I was ready for um, something different and uh, decided to uh, enter the portal and now I'm here. Watson was recruited by multiple Power Five schools, including Syracuse, Boston College, Kansas State, and Utah. So why Memphis? Yeah, I just think of um, the family atmosphere, the, um, the people that are here, coaching staff, um, players, everybody here is just great. and. Um, Definitely wanted to be a part of it. When you're checking this place out, how aware are you of the running backs and the skill position players that have come through here in the past and how much does that play into it? I was definitely very aware of it and um, it played a big role into it. I mean, uh, that's a dream from uh, for me to go to the NFL and uh, just seeing all the people that Memphis has put into the NFL was definitely um, appealing. Watson was ready to hit the ground running in the spring until a broken collarbone suffered in practice sidelined him right after he got to the 901. Yeah, I mean, that was a little crazy. I mean, uh, already doing five years of college, I mean, you already face some adversity and go through things and stuff like that. But um, definitely just being somewhere new, trying to prove yourself to the guys and show everybody what you have and all that stuff. It was definitely a little setback, but uh, just stayed the course and just kept my head up. Watson recovered, and once the summer rolled around, he started showing what he was made of. Yeah, I definitely try to um, pick up where I left off and definitely just try to um, do whatever I can to pick back up. And it quickly became evident that Watson was special. He's established himself as the Tigers lead back, home run hitter, and touchdown machine. Uh, it's been amazing. I'm, I'm just glad that I'm able to help these guys bring a championship to Memphis, for the city, for uh, the team, for the culture. I mean, it's phenomenal. I'm sure you knew at ODU that you were good enough, but is there any validation to do it at this level in this conference at this school? I mean, this is my third conference uh, coming from ODU. So uh, definitely just feels good to be able to do it at multiple different levels. Are you a chip on your shoulder kind of guy at all? <laughs> a little bit, yes, for sure. So does that recruit that only had Elon and ODU coming after you out of high school, does that still live now? I do a lot of this to make my old self proud. And I just want to keep on going. It's not top of mind right now, but Watson is setting himself up to accomplish a dream and play on Sundays next year. Yeah, I mean, um, just try not to think about it too much. Just know that um, it is right there for me. And um, everything that I have been doing has gotten me to this point. So just keep on working, keep on going. And um, I was lucky enough to have a brother that was in the same position. And um, just watching him, seeing what he went through, I mean, it's a great uh, mentor and uh, just gonna keep on working. Watson's older brother, Brad, was a cornerback who had a stint in the NFL with the Chargers. To also play in the NFL along with your brother and you think about any family that gets to say that, that's a pretty cool milestone. How sure. awesome would that be for you? No, that would be phenomenal. That would be so cool. I mean, not a lot of people get to say that one. I know the journey's still ongoing, but when you look back at where you started, the lack of recruitment, going to ODU and all that, and where you are now. How proud are you of yourself? I'm extremely proud, because I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, I've worked for everything that I've gotten. I, nothing's been handed to me. I've, I've always had to go get everything that I've had, and uh, I'm proud of that. Coach, Blake Watson told that pill, man. That's all I got to tell you. Man. I love to see the young girl tote that rock because he runs so hard, man. Yeah, I think with Blake, you know, he's a guy that a lot of our fans weren't able to see in the spring. He was a little banged up. And I kept mentioning him. I said, hey, I just think this guy's going to have production success. He was a back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher at ODU. Well, I think what Memphis Tiger fans are able to see is not only is he a tremendous running back, 
But he's able to do a phenomenal job out of the backfield catching the ball. He plays some special teams for us, and that's what's so unique. He's got great vision, he's got great hands, he's willing to play special teams. He's fit right in as well that next great Memphis running back. I think it was after the Navy game where you said you've been around a lot of really good running backs to your coaching career, and that Blake has some of the best vision of any running back you've ever been around. That's obviously high praise. Does that speak to just how special he is kind of in that pantheon of guys you've been around? I've been very fortunate to be a lot, a lot of great ones, right? We obviously, let's just talk about the ones we've had at Memphis. And you know, NFL scouts say, hey, talk to us about Blake Watson. I said, okay, here's a comparison. A lot of these younger scouts have no idea what I'm talking about. I said, he's Kenny Gainwell and Patrick Taylor combined. And what does that mean? He's got the versatility to do a lot of different things. And I think we talked about the vision, his balance, ability to catch the ball. He's smart, so he learned the system. We can line him up all over the field. He's good in pass protection. So I think we're seeing those things that he's able to do. We're putting him on display week in and week out. And I think, you know, the rest of the season, he's going to have a, continue to have a big year. Now we can talk about what he does on the court. I know some of the things he does off the court. Great teammate, great person in the city. Uh, talk about Blake the person, because talking to his dad, his dad had a lot of superlatives to say about him as well. Yeah, well, I hope every father has positive superlatives <laughs> to say. I've, people have had superlatives to say about me. Now they're not always in a positive light, but no. Obviously, yeah. Blake's one of those. He's a quiet young man that does it right. He shows up and just puts his head down and works. Like I said, I use the word intelligence with him and the willingness to block all those things. that has got the physicality, the vision, the toughness. Uh, day in and day out, he puts it on display not only in practice, and we'll get to see it on game day as well. Was there a moment or a day leading up to the season where it clicked in your head, oh, he's special? Well, I think part of it is the unique schemes that we run. We run a multitude of schemes, right? It's not like we're just an inside zone, a pin and pull scheme. We run a lot of different schemes. And what I got to see with him is, you know, okay, he's really good at that. Oh, he's he checked another box. Oh, he can catch, check that box, he can do it. So you look at a guy that can do all those things and then do it consistently, right? And there's times we see him break the long run. We see him times where he breaks a tackle, where he you know, has vision, cuts it in the hole. Sometimes if there's nothing there, he finds a way to get two yards. So all those positive things, I think we get to see day in and day out. And you know, that's where you said, okay, this guy has a chance to be really darn good. The Battle of the Bones is back. We'll preview a trip to Birmingham coming up next. You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Let's take a look at the AutoZone road ahead. All right, Coach UAB, what you think? Yeah, look, obviously traveling to Birmingham, a close enough team, obviously a traditional rivalry. When I got to Memphis, fans always talked about that game, the Battle of the Bones. But, you know, close enough proximity, I look forward to seeing a lot of our fans there. UAB is on the come up, right? They're doing a lot of things. We know about their history, obviously new to our conference. They have a head coach that a lot of our fans will know, and a guy named Trent Delfer, obviously the first round quarterback, obviously a Super Bowl champ, but he's done a lot of great things there. He's got them playing at a high level. They should have beat Tulane the other week. Uh, look, we're gonna have our hands full, but excited to get to Birmingham and take them on. I want to hit on that. New look conference, you lost some of those traditional rivalries of the past, but you get one back in a way. How cool is that? Yeah, and I think what's my favorite thing is it's a regional team, right? It's not like we're, hey, hop on a plane, let's go there. We can get on the bus and go play them. I think like you talk about the history of the University of Memphis and some of those rivalries. This is a great one to bring back because of the new look conference and excited to get down there. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Tigers with a tough test as they get ready to head to Birmingham. Coming up, more of the Ryan Silverfield Show. You're watching the Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Thank you all for watching the Ryan Silverfield Show. Until next week. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. When you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.